Deconstructing Sociocultural Narratives with Sandra Collins and Gina Co. So Sandra, I was really looking forward to talking to you today. Um, I really miss my, my nephew. He's six and a half months now. And I've hardly had a chance to see him because of COVID. So it's been, it's, it's been, I'm feeling it's been harder and harder to be distant from him. So, yeah. Yeah, it really makes the experience of COVID very personal for you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so when sometimes I think, well, sometimes I, I feel the sadness and sometimes even some anger. Let's say I see people walking around without a mask, right, in, in uh, indoors, and I know you know some people have health reasons to not wear a mask, but if I if I see more and more people without one, I start to feel angry. Like we have to be safe mm -hmm. because I've not seen my nephew for a long time, and I want to see him. He's he's so dear to me. Mm -hmm. That feeling of anger, what comes up for you in terms of your beliefs about um, people, your beliefs about responsibility to each other in society, when you feel that anger boiling up? Anger is, 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 is it's neat in that I've started to realize I need to sit with, with the, the anger because in our society, women are not supposed to be angry right women need to you know like the, the, for example women in, in politics if they're angry they'll be labeled the b word or even the c word or whereas if men are showing anger it's oh he's being a leader he's being assertive right so um so now i'm i'm wanting to be okay i'm angry now i'm just i'm i'm sometimes even enraged and process some of that and not just push it and, 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 and shove it down just because women aren't supposed to be angry. Mm -hmm. So it's really, um, it's forcing you to kind of look at how you respond in these situations and, and look at that from a gendered perspective and how um, your experiences of gender have really impacted your freedom to express um, the feeling that you have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, some, sometimes, I mean, it could be subtle, but it could be more direct. Some, some, like I'd hear something like, well, don't be angry, or, you know, it may be coming from a friend or a family member. And then I, 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 I actually respond to that. My thinking is, why not? How, can, how come I can't be angry? And then I explore what else am I feeling now? I'm, um, I'm, I may be feeling um, maybe injustice, like, again, going back to the gender, you know, topic where if it's, it's a man, maybe he wouldn't be told, don't be angry. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So if you were um, not female, how do you think you would be responding differently in this situation? when you encounter people? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think I, well, may, maybe not so much encountering people at the mall or something without out a mask, but maybe in conversations with, with, with people around me, uh, whether it's through technology now because we can't see people, I might be more, willing to say, say things, to express my beliefs in wearing a mask or social distancing or please get vaccinated, everyone, right? Because sometimes I I hold back mm -hmm. for some reason. And, and this is a good question because I think if I was a man, um, I might not hold back as much because mm -hmm. I, I would think people would take me more seriously, mm -hmm. which angers me now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a double whammy, right? Because you um, you hold back because of those gendered expectations. Yeah. And then you feel even less able to voice 
things because you're already in that position of holding back, which then increases the frustration or anger that you feel. Yes, yes. And I'm noticing that a bit more, a bit more lately as, again, vaccines are coming, people are getting vaccinated. And um, I, of course, I believe that the vaccine works. And there's lots of scientists and medical professionals who believe it. And when I'm hearing let's say some friends who are hesitant, it worries me, like I'm worried. And it, it also in a way angers me. Like, I, I think you need to think about other people besides yourself, you know? And then, and then there's also now I feel guilty because the, am I, is this labeling someone not a good person or a selfish person. So there's a few things going on there. I'm wondering if there's a connection to your experience of a mother, because you started out um, talking about your nephew and the loss, your feeling of not being able to see your nephew. From what I know of you, some of the times when I see you kind of grab onto that fire is when you're protecting someone or you're standing up against the injustice um, of racism, for example, um, on behalf of other people. And so uh, I wonder if there is a piece of you that's connected, uh, and I don't know if the connection to mother is the appropriate connection, but um, that pushes you beyond those sort of gendered boundaries that you feel. So Sandra, you're just making me reflect on, mothering makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah, I am a mother of two children, they're 12 and 15, and I have a little nephew. Um, maybe it's that, hey, that the narrative of motherhood too, you should not be angry. You shall be nurturing. You shall be mothering, right? So a part of that may not fit into times when I want to speak up and want to be more assertive and even show my anger. So I was actually thinking about it in a different way that maybe, maybe the mothering brings out that protective peace in you that enables you to stand up and have a voice um, but what you're saying is that perhaps mothering from within your cultural perspective actually serves to further suppress um, your feeling like you can have a voice or you're risking having a voice I think it's actually both Sandra I'm glad you brought that up it is both that's the mothering protective part of me would, yeah, would often sometimes say something and do something and speak up. And then there's the other part where, um, you know, again, the narrative mother should be nurturing and gentle and women should be, should be, should be. So at times I, I do sit back, I, but I'm also realizing when you mentioned racism, what's happening with the with Asians or globally and I've also other minoritized and racialized groups, I am now more apt to, to speak up. And to to be, yeah, to make my point clear, but also hopefully respectful mm -hmm. and, and 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 digestible, I guess. So yeah. So what I'm hearing is that you um, you're very conscious of the ways in which um, society has these gendered messages, and then. Within the Asian culture, there's also these gendered messages around mothering, and that they um, that together they serve to kind of put you in a box that isn't always comfortable um, and makes you frustrated and angry. Um, and yet, there's other places in your life where um, you are noticing this change of speaking up more from that place of um, caring about other people and being protective. So, in some ways. Um, that the gender is serving you positively in that instance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gender and also the intersections of my identity, right? Gender, being Asian, um, you know, in, ter in terms of be being educated, I know I, 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 can, I, I can express myself and more, most times than not, people understand and get what I'm saying. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, good point, because it's it's um, gender in the context of those intersections mm -hmm. um, uh, that is really pulling pulling you in that direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks. 
Where would you go next in continuing to deconstruct sociocultural narratives with Gina?